Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new, welcome. My name is Zoe, most people know me as ZA Reptiles, and today I'm going to be showing you how I'm making my backgrounds for my new Kenyan Sand Boa and Western Hognose enclosures. So first we start off cutting our background piece to fit our enclosures, and then cutting our individual pieces to put on. I just kind of hacked at these with a box cutter to get kind of that rocky texture. And then you just silicone the pieces on. All right. So we're to the grouting stage for our Tootsie and Penelope's backgrounds. So just a quick review. I used a knife to cut these. I really chopped into them to give them kind of like a stone texture. And then I just silicone them on and let them dry overnight. For things that stick out like the platforms, I use toothpicks to hold them in place. And then once the silicone is dry, I just pull the toothpicks out. So I just mixed up my grout. This is the same grout I used for Queso's background. Um, if you missed that video, I have done this whole step-by-step -step process for my leopard gecko. So I will link that video in the description if you guys wanna check it out. That was kind of like a learning process. So I made some mistakes. I talked about what I would do differently. So I'm better prepared this time. So what I'm using is non-sanded grout. I got right at Home Depot. This is colored, ready color earth. So it makes kind of like a nice stone color. I bought kind of like a darker dirt colored grout um, because I was gonna do these hides I made. So I'll be making another video on how to DIY some big hides, but I can't find it. So we're just gonna do the backgrounds for today. So I have it all mixed up. You want it to be kind of like a paint, paint like consistency so you can just paint it on. So what I'm gonna do differently with these that I didn't do for quesos is after I do the grout, I'm gonna use acrylic paint, I think. I think I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna use acrylic paint to give kind of more color and more dimension to the rocks and to the background. So it's not just one solid color. So we're gonna do a couple layers of grout to make sure it's good and solid. I am not sure if I'll do the sides in the back like I did for quesos. When you buy the Exoterra tanks, you guys know how they come with like the styrofoam backing. So because these are a drier species, both of them are, um, it's not gonna be super humid. So I don't know if I'll worry about doing the back. However, they are gonna be bioactive and I don't want any cleanup crew or anything to be eating at the styrofoam. So we'll play it by ear. But for now, I'm just gonna worry about grouting the front, so that's what we're gonna be doing today. And then we're just going to paint it on. Now I've learned you don't wanna make it too thick because when the grout dries, it will crack. It's better to do a bunch of thin layers to, than to do just a couple of thick layers. Um, I made that mistake when I DIY'd Queso's hide. I just slapped some grout on, very thick layers, and it cracked almost immediately. So thin layers are best. You might have to do a couple layers to get it looking really good and covered, but if you want to avoid cracking, I suggest doing a bunch of thin layers. It's also very important to make sure you get in all the nooks and crannies so that you don't have your styrofoam exposed. I feel like this is more important if you're doing a humid setup or if you have cleanup crew or loose feeders like crickets or superworms that might try to eat the styrofoam because these are for snakes and because it's a arid setup. I don't know that you'd have to worry too much. I'm mainly just worried about the cleanup crew. I don't really want isopods or whatever cleanup crew I use to be eating my nice background. So the front shouldn't be much of a problem because this grout is basically like stone. You're turning your surface into rock. It's more so the bottoms that I'm worried about. So I might at least hit the bottom of the background with styrofoam or with grout just because that's the part they'll be in contact with. So this one I'm doing right now is Tootsie's um, because Tootsie is a, for those who don't know, Tootsie is my sand boa. 
because they are a fossorial species, meaning they spend most of their time underground. I didn't do lots of ledges or anything for her to climb on. There are gaps in these rocks so that she can climb through them because she does like to climb. I see her out from time to time climbing and adventuring. Um, so I wanted to give her something, but I did do two ledges so that there's some sort of definition or naturalness to the background, just something different. Um, the next one I'm going to do is Penelope's and she is the adventurer. She's usually out, she's diurnal. So I did lots of little ledges so she had lots to climb on and lots to explore. So I'm very excited to give these to them. Okay, so they're both grouted. It is quite a tedious process. This took me an hour because you have to get in between like all of the pieces of styrofoam, make sure it's all covered. So an hour later, I have both pieces done. Okay, so next day, going in and doing another layer today. So yeah. Okay, so I'm also not sure why it dries like this sometimes. It did it to me on quesos too when I did her hers last time it's like it randomly dries like kind of white in spots i don't understand if you guys know why it does that leave me a comment let me know but i'm just gonna say screw it and go ahead and move on to the painting part all right so i went through my paints and pulled out kind of the warm colors that i've got i apparently don't have a white so we're just gonna use this kind of light tan um so I'll mix some colors, use what I've got. So I've got like a red, an orange, a yellow, a tan, black when you make anything darker. Um, and we're just gonna wing it. The good part about this is you can always, if you don't like it, paint over it. Um, so I'm gonna dry brush. So I've got a brush and a paper towel so I can dry off my brush. That way I'm just leaving dry brush paint strokes behind that kind of match the texture of the background. Um, another thing you can do, which I would do if I had a spray bottle, is to fill a spray bottle with paint and water and just spray it on. So I would totally do that to cover up all this yuck if I had a spray bottle on hand, but I don't. So we're just gonna see what happens. Okay? Okay. okay so I'm not sure why the lighting in this room is so weird. This is much darker in person and it's more of a brown. For some reason on the camera, it's not looking the way it looks in person, but whatever. So this is Tootsie's. So we're going to be starting with Tootsies. Okay, so I mixed together um, an orange, yellow, dark red, and a dot of black to get kind of like this orangey brown. We're going to start with that. Okay, so I finished the like reddish orange brown color. Now I'm going to go through with the lighter mocha color to highlight the outer parts. And I'll go through with like, I don't know if I'll use black per se, but like maybe I'll mix these two and make like a dark, dark brown um, for the shadowing just to give it more dimension. Okay, so there's the highlights. Now we move in with the shadows. All right, I really like how that came out. I ignored this spot right here. There was a lot of white there, so I just covered it. So we'll see what it looks like when it dries. But I really quite like that. It looks very rock-like. Yeah, pretty good. So now we'll do Penelope's. So for Tootsie, when I think of Tootsie, I think of dark, underground, desert, like, dark. So I wanted something a little more dark, hard, earthy for her. Penelope makes me think of meadows and sunflowers and pink. So I want hers to be lighter, happier, not so dark. Because in my mind, my animals have their personalities. Tootsies is quite dark, quite antisocial, quite leave me alone. Relatable. Penelope's is like happy, sunshine. Yeah. So we're going to try to mimic that in her background. 
for Penelope, we're aiming for lighter, so I'm taking lighter colors. So I just did the yellow to give it some more color. Now I'm gonna go in with this kind of like tannish, what is it called? The mocha, mocha, light mocha, to give it some highlights. And we're gonna see how that looks and go from there. All right, and there's Penelope's again. The lighting in this room is really weird. You can't really tell what it looks like. It looks gray when it's actually brown, but you guys will get to see it better later. Okay, so you can see it a little better out here. So here's Tootsie's and Penelope's. All right, now the final step. We're going to seal it. And I used this water-based polyacrylic from Minwax. You can get it right at Home Depot and Walmart. And I got it in the clear matte. So I don't know if I'm gonna have enough to do both of them, but I do have a second one, so. And then I'm just gonna use a paintbrush to paint it on. All right, so the backgrounds are done. They've been sealed, they're good to go. This is what it looks like when you use a matte sealant. And while I have you here, I wanna talk about sealants. So I always use this polyacrylic water-based matte from Minwax. After looking on Facebook and reading what people are using, a lot of people do recommend that, but they also recommend this. This is Verithane and it's polyurethane. So people actually say they recommend polyurethane over polyacrylic because it dries faster, even though this is fast dry. Apparently this dries faster and it's even more water um, repellent or water safe, whatever words I'm looking for, you guys know what I'm trying to say. Um, apparently it's more water safe than the polyacrylic. So if you are doing this project, maybe try this, um, but again, get in matte. I was gonna do another layer using this, but it's semi-gloss and I really don't want a very shiny background. I'd rather it stay matte, but this looks like it would be a really good option, maybe even better than the polyacrylic. So there's that. So when you're sealing, I recommend just like the grout doing a couple of layers, just to make sure it's really good. So I'm gonna let those air out and when they don't stink anymore, I'll put them in the enclosure so you can see how they look. So just an update, the earth is the lighter brown that I used. So I don't know why it came out dark this time. It looks like this one. Not that for some reason, but that's what it looked like last time. Okay, so here's the final look. This is Penelope's with my hog nose. Pretty cool, I like it, I like it. And then we have Tootsie, my Kenyan sand boa down here. So if you guys like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you can see when I make these enclosures fully bioactive. And we'll see you for the next video.